Hello, in this video I'll show how to replace front terminal block on HP 3458A. This is a time-lapse video of the whole process from start to finish. First we need to remove in-guard boards such as ADC, AC board and input DC front-end board. This is required to get access to terminal blocks. When removing boards, avoid touching any components or sockets to avoid contamination or ESD damage. In this video 2 meters will be serviced and I will also replace front panel on one of them. 3458A originally designed by Hewlett Packard and later it was refreshed by Edgeland and now it's same units made by Keysight. One of my meters will also need a replacement of rear terminal block, so I'll have to remove the whole frame to get access to those as well. Make sure to remember which screws located in which position. And this is the second meter, I'll have just to swap the front terminal on this one. And as with the previous, we still need to remove all the boards. You can also see the front panel on the left side, ready for install. Both of these meters were in 24-7 operation since 2016. You can see this meter have additional memory installed using NVRAM DLS chips, but actually that's not required. You can use just simple SRAM and they will work just fine. And connections to terminal blocks are soldered in, so we will have to cut the original wires and resolder back to the new connector. Here you can see brand new connector on the right side, and believe me you don't want to damage that connector, since its cost is over 200 USD. Now with connector installed, I'll put all the boards back, and we can proceed with testing. Ugly looking black insulated box is voltage reference. This meter is also a bit special because the voltage reference using LTZ1000CH chip, not the standard factory LTZ1000A. Both references in my meters were modified for lower oven temperature to provide better long term stability. Now you cannot see it, but I am installing the front panel to make sure everything fits nice. And with front panel installed, we can now proceed to put rest of the boards in and we can check the meter is still operational. Now turn on the power, and here we go, first readings. Now we can connect plastic rods, put all the buttons back, shields, and verify that 10 volt is still in spec. As you can see, I also don't have dust filters on the rear, that's intentional to keep the inner temperatures lower. Now meter is powered on, and let's connect 10 volt reference. Do the self test now, no problem. Now as additional test, perform the artifact calibration. I can also check the second 10 volt reference I have. This is recently calibrated, Wavetech 7000, 10 volt, 1 volt DC voltage reference. This is quite rare device, manufactured by Wavetech just before Fluke bought them and EOL the whole product line. It takes about 860 seconds to perform the full ACAL. And here we go, 10 volts. Now I can get back to the previous unit with replaced rear terminal block which is doing everything in reverse direction 
connect all the metal frame parts get all the wiring done that small PCB have protection circuits and front rear terminal switch quite often old uh, 3458A's have bad switch which cause high readings in 2 wire ohm measurements so if you buy and use 3458A it's worth to check what meter shows on shorted input now you can see I'm installing A1 DC board try not to touch any components on it now it's time to put AC board back in ADC board Now it's time to connect fiber optic cables between different boards and install binding post into front panel plastic cover. Make sure to use correct screws. Make sure to use correct screws to avoid plastic studs damage. Now the terminal block is in place and we can install the whole front panel assembly to the unit. Now we're finishing up, install plastic rods for buttons and install shields. I have actually one of the shields missing for this unit, so I'll have to install it later. Now we can go ahead and power on do the self test everything okay now we can do also the same test with doing artifact calibration this is internal calibration which use internal 7 volt reference and 40 kilo ohm reference resistor to adjust all the other ranges and functions in DMM once this will be done, we can measure our 10 volt box and make sure that meter reads correct value. If meter cannot perform full AKL, it will report an error and show which test failed. Now it's all ready and we can read our 10 volts, no problems. And here is the short time lapse showing how meter readings change during the warm up cycle. The normal expected warm up time for this kind of meters is from 4 to 8 hours. If you like this video or interested in metrology test equipment repairs and calibration, make sure to check my website xdevs.com. You can find complete repair work log on links shown on the screen here. Thank you.